I want to share with you this fantastic desert story, but it's, it's almost impossible to do that in 15 minutes, so I won't waste any time. I'll take you back immediately to um, uh, the period where we belonged to Armstrong. Um, that was a very nasty period for us. Um, we lost our leading position that we had in design and innovation completely, and completely. We know that because in 2007 we became independent again. And extensive market research uh, on the brand values of Desso pointed out that we were a very reliable company with high quality products, but our image was at that time, as we say in Dutch, albollig. And albollig, I can assure you, is even worse than old fashioned. And when your target audience is the interior architect and the designer, you have a slight problem. But we, um, we're back on top, and it is because we started to innovate, innovate in the fields of creativity, functionality, and cradle to cradle. I'll explain to you what we did, but first, who are we? We're um, a global company that manufactures carpets with a focus on, on Europe and uh, Middle East and Asia. And these are the segments we're working on. The first one is contract carpet, by far the most important part of DESO, more than 65% is coming out of that segment. And when we talk about contract carpet, we're talking about carpet tiles. The other ones is not about tiles, this is, this is about very special woven carpet for very special places, five-star hotels, uh, cruise ships and airplanes. And home is a bit of a challenge. Um, this is consumer carpet. We're selling that mainly in the Benelux. But the trend there is that people don't have carpet in their living rooms anymore. And I understand that it's even the case here in your country. And this is the country where you used to have carpet in the toilets. But, <laughs> you, but you don't have carpet in your living rooms. So, so that's a bit difficult. And sports, this is only about um, artificial grass in the exterior, and we have a very special product. It's called Grassmaster. It's a combination of real grass and artificial fibers that are injected in the surface. And then it becomes 10 times as strong as normal grass with exactly the same features. And this is the best surface for football and for rugby and even American football. And I'm happy to say that in this football-loving nation, every major club in their main pitch has their own grassmasters. Fantastic. This is all about innovation. This is about redesigning. And that's, that's what we've done with our carpet tiles. We are redesigning our carpet tiles. <coughs> I'll explain to you what we do. Because our vision is, how can we make the floor work for your health and well-being? So producing products that are really beneficial to the interior environment. First, they have to look good, so we're working with our target audience in the so-called circle of architects, and we ask their opinion on um, our de product developments in the stage of prototypes. And we also opened, just before summer, an, a design center where architects can co-create with our designers specialized, customized products, and it's, it's, an, it's a, a high-level, high-quality <coughs> um, production facility. So you can not only immediately produce samples, but also do real productions. And you can actually create fantastic products um, that the market really needs, because these are your own products. But OK, we also redesigned the product on functionality. Um, <coughs> because more than 90% of your time, you're inside. So we have to do something about this interior climate. And we've developed a product called Airmaster. This is a product that actually cleans the air. We already know, because it's a mistake to think that carpet is bad for your health because modern contract carpet doesn't create dust, it captures dust. And, it, and, and <clears throat> what it does is it captures fine dust. And fine dust is really a big problem now <laughs> because if you look at what the World Health Organization says about fine dust, it claims that there are 7 million premature deaths on a yearly basis because of poor air quality. So you have to do something about fine dust. <coughs> and to just to, to explain to you what it is, because uh, it's, you can't see it. We're talking about particles smaller than 10 mu or 2.5 mu. And here you see 10 mu and 2.5 and mu, and, and 10 mu on a human hair. This is how small it is. You can't see it. Uh, experts say if you could see it, if it would have been purple, we would have, we would have done something about, about it a long time ago, but you don't see it. And what happens is uh, bad germs and bacteria can attach themselves to fine dust, and via your lungs it can penetrate into your vascular system. That's what's making it so extremely dangerous, causing all kinds of diseases. So you want to do something about it. And how does it work? It's, it's a chemical, a mechanical system, so it's, it's not probiotics or chemicals added to the carpet. It's a patented system of very thin yarns and, and, and a lot, some thicker yarns. And they, they capture the fine dust and keep it there until you start vacuum cleaning it. And because of the construction, the air velocity is a lot higher. So you so also take out everything. So the functionality of the carpet stays there as long as it's, in, as it's installed. 
Um, we had to prove it, of course. And we did this with an organization called, called GUI. It's a German organization specialized in that. Three exactly the same rooms with linoleum, normal, lupal carpet, and uh, air master. And you can see that the highest concentration of fine dust with air master doesn't even come close to the lowest concentration with linoleum. So this means that air master captures eight times more fine dust than a hard floor, and four times more than a normal uh, carpet floor. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is, this is one of the innovations, and, and this is also about being beneficial to the interior climate. Uh, you probably know that um, modern interiors have smooth, hard surfaces. They, in most cases, they don't have a, a system ceiling, so noise is going to be a problem. And the new working place is about movement. You've probably heard this before. Sitting is going to be the new smoking. We have to get out, get out of our chairs. We have to go um, have meetings standing up, and you have to go to your colleague instead of sending him an email. This is, all, uh, this is all okay, but it's going to cause sounds and noises. And we have a product, it's a, it's a, it's a backing made out of recycled PET bottles, and you can add it to all kinds of, uh, most of our carpet tiles. And this will solve all kinds of problems caused by noise and sound. There are a lot more um, innovations that we have products that reflect light. We have a cooperation with Philips where you have LEDs under the carpet tiles and you can communicate in a unique way. You will see carpets that uh, create energy, that transport energy. So there's a lot. This is going to be exciting times. The floor is going to have a complete new role in the modern office. But you have to do this in a sustainable way. And we're doing it according to the cradle to cradle way. You know what it is. It's about material health, renewable energy, social fairness, water stewardship, and material utilization. <laughs> we started this in 2008. We were doing this already, but this is about eco-efficiency. And Cradle to Cradle is not about eco-efficiency, but it's about eco-effectiveness. It's not about doing things right, because maybe you're doing all kinds of bad things in a completely right way, but you have to do the right things. You have to leave a positive footprint. That's what it's all about. And <coughs> you know, when you talk about cradle to cradle, you're talking about the biological cycle and the, and the uh, technical cycle. We did try the biological cycle, and then you get things like this. This is a carpet made out of jute. But the problem is, normal contract carpet, at least ours, will stay for 15 years. It will last for 15 years. And this, this is gone after six months. Completely. <laughs> There's nothing left. And so this is not a... We also tried hemp. Um, hemp is also... Some, you can make yarns out of that. Um, in Holland, we grow hemp in attics and in sheds because we do something completely different with it. <laughs> um, well, we had the same experience. It's, it's not very durable. By the way, the Dutch reacted really as it can be expected. They thought that you would get really mind-blowing carpets. <laughs> and if I tell this story... <laughs> In, in schools in Holland, one thing is absolutely clear. The Dutch youth thinks it's a complete waste to create or to produce carpet out of hemp. <laughs> so we've, we focus on the, the technical cycle, and you have to do, to do this in a 100% safe way. You have to know until the last ingredients what's in there. And the red ones and even the, gray, the yellow ones, you have to phase out. And now the problem with our biggest product the carpet tile, 36 million carpet tiles per year we produce. The backing was a traditional backing, and this was not suited for a cradle-to-cradle -cradle process. We had to change the backing from bitumen into a completely new, safe backing. It looks almost impossible. We managed to do that. We have a certain polyolefin eco-based backing, and now the product is completely safe. Our CEO always says, you can eat it. I hope you will never <laughs> have to do that, but it is completely safe. And that means that we now have, for 90% of our carpet tile range, a cradle to cradle silver certificate. One part of the certificate also means that you have to make sure that ingredients stay in endless loops. So we have already a department called Refinity, and what we do is we take back carpet tiles. This is not the department where these cradle to cradle tiles are separated, no, the traditional tiles. Hundreds of millions are out there, and we take back everything. It doesn't matter whose they are, which brand. There's only one restriction. They can't have a PVC backing. And what we do is, <coughs> you have to facilitate this, by the way. If you don't do it, the, the, the companies that take back these carpet tiles, they don't want to change. But if you facilitate them and you, and you supply them with, with means that make it easier, cheaper, and faster to do so, then they'll start working with you. Then they'll start cooperating. And with the yarn that we get back from these traditional tiles, we can produce new yarns. 
Our partner Aquafilt, she's going to be here this afternoon, is doing that. And they also use other Polymite 6 materials like fish nets. And that's the reason why we joined with Healthy Seas. They remove waste uh, from the seas and, and particularly fish nets. And that's also being used to produce new yarn from. <coughs> This is what the circular economy is all about. You, ha you don't have waste anymore, you only have materials. And you all know this report of, of McKinsey, done on request of the Ellen MacArthur. I don't know if this number is accurate, but it shows the urgency that we have to do something. We have to change our ways and we have to work towards the circular economy. Um, and also it helps us in, I'm doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> it helps us in... <laughs> I can take a break. <laughs> no, it helps us in also still innovate on, on this because we have this fantastic new safe backing, but we still need a filler in there. And in our case, that is chalk. Chalk we get from French mines. We, we take it to Holland, which is absurd because we have a lot of chalk in Holland and in Holland, it's in the water that we make, where we make drinking water from. So the water companies, what they do, they extract the chalk with sand. And because of that, they can't do anything with it. They have a huge pile of waste of chalk around sand. We couldn't, we couldn't use that. And what we did, we worked together with them to change the process. And now we, they retract the chalk in a completely different way without sand. And we can use it. So now we have, we've, we have created waste as a cradle material and we reuse it endlessly in our tiles. And there's another uh, uh, benefit. Because of this, this new process, they can use the chalk also for other industries. So this is exactly what you have to do. And we're, go we're going to use 1.7 million kilos of chalk in our production facilities. Okay. This calls for new uh, business models, of course. Don't buy and own your carpet, but only pay for the use or for the, for the comfort of it. And we've started a program, uh, a leasing program, the first leasing program for cradle-to-cradle -cradle carpet tiles with an international company called The Lage London. I think they have to change the name because that's not very international, The Lage London, but okay. <coughs> We, we've, we're really proud that, that, that we, that we did, as, as the first company in the world, have this concept. Okay, the effect. The effect that it has been on Desso. Was it a good idea to do this? Uh, just remember, 2007, old-fashioned, old our ball of company. I could show, show you dozens of slides with so-called free publicity that I generate, but, and I would have had the time, I've seen, but I, I thought I didn't. But I'll show you this. This is... Uh, this is, this is one of the most famous, uh, most influential trend watchers in Europe, Hilda Rota, her name is. And now suddenly she, she lists us in a group of companies, read with me, Apple, Unilever, Fitra, Patagonia, Ikea and Desso, as a company with um, more financial, but, but more important, more social profit. It's, it's unthinkable. In 2007, we had this company, and now we're mentioned in this list. And this is also what happened. It would be unthinkable that an artist like Petra Blaise would come to Desso and, and ask for cooperation. And what happened now, we worked together on the biggest art piece for the newly opened uh, Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam. It's a huge uh, wall carpet, the connection between the old and the new part. And, and like I said, that was unthinkable. And now things like this happen, and I have some other examples. The Queen visited, visited us. What she did was organize the last regional visit in her career in our area so that she could see for herself what we were doing on cradle to cradle and, and uh, <coughs> uh, circular economy. And I always say, I know why she stopped, because shortly after that she stopped. Because she had seen that so. <laughs> <laughs> And then you can retire. She gave the job to her son. And, um, okay, her son is not that trendy, but his wife is. His <laughs> wife is fantastic. And this is the crowning. And uh, the story is that the Mr. Tauminio, the designer of this fantastic dress, was inspired for the color of the dress by the color of the Deso carpet. I can tell you it's the other way around. <laughs> and this happened two months ago.
how cool is that? The famous fashion designers Victor and Wolf in their last Haute Couture show in Paris had a, um, a theme, red carpet dressing, and they approached us. What are you doing? We yeah, still have a minute. Yeah. Two minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to sit here then. <laughs> okay. Okay, these, these examples are basically focused on Holland, but I can assure you that Desso UK has doubled its market share in the last four years. It's incredible because this market isn't growing. And, and this is what um, <laughs> Tom Frank would have shown you because this is also extremely important. He would have shown you this slide showing that nowadays we have more than 50% positively defined recycled content, but our profitability came from a 3% EBITDA in 2006 to more than 10% than now. And this is also what it's all about, of course. And this is probably the best proof that we are on the right track. It's the announcement of last week that Target, the third flooring company in the world, announced that they are going to acquire Desso. Target is the organization that wants to be the sustainable brand in, in the industry. And with a focus on cradle to cradle and with a focus on um, circular economy, and that's why they are buying the best in class. So together with them, we are going to achieve these goals, and we are going to make sure that, that this is spread out all over the world, these innovations. And <clears throat> because if there's one thing clear, to have the, the key success for the future is to innovate on healthy and safe materials and really work on a sustainable business model. And for us, that is the circular economy with cradle to cradle. Thank you.